Hi, this is Caleb Ward with PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a vintage effect in After Effects. In addition to a classic vintage effect, this tutorial will show you how to create a pets fall lens effect and show you how to save time by using our free presets. Before we get going, I want to encourage you to download the free stock footage used in this tutorial. The footage can be found by clicking the link in the description of this video or by visiting premiumbeat.com and searching vintage effect. All right, so this is the vintage look that we're going to be going for in our first tutorial here. Uh, as you can see, there's some more blues in the dark areas. The whites have been toned down. There's even some chromatic aberrations along the edge of the glass here. You see this purple fringing, and that's very common among vintage lenses. And there's also a nice film grain that After Effects is generating over this whole image. So let's hop in. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is just import the footage from the corresponding download at premiumbeat.com and you're going to see that there's a clip of some coffee being stirred and there's some footage of a field. We'll worry about the footage of the field whenever we do our preset tutorial uh, towards the end of this video, but for now what we're going to do is I'm just going to grab this footage of the coffee and I'm going to drag it to this little frame here and that's going to create a new composition based on this clip. So as you can see the composition has started with frame zero and it ends at about 15 seconds. So what we're going to do is duplicate this footage in the timeline three times and I'm going to apply an effect called shift channels. And what we're going to do is you see there's take red from, take green from, take blue from. I'm going to set the green to full off, the blue to full off, and now you'll see there's just this bright red image. And what this is basically doing is it's only allowing for the red pixel information to show up. And so I'm going to go ahead and rename this layer, we'll call this red, and I'm going to click on the second clip here and I'm going to drag the shift channels effect over and I'm going to turn the green off this time, and I'm going to turn off the red. And so if we drag this one to the top, you can see that it is all blue, and I'm just going to click the clip here and rename it blue. And then the bottom one, as you guessed, is going to be green, so I'm going to drag over the shift channels effect. I'm going to turn blue off, and I'm going to turn red off. And if I solo it, you can see that the green is popping up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set our transfer mode to add and voila, we have the original image. So the reason why this worked is because when a computer or TV screen replicates color information, it uses red, blue, and green channels. So whenever you add them all together, it equals the original image. Makes sense, right? So just to be a good and organized After Effects person, I'm just going to go ahead and rename this green and I'm going to add in a radial blur effect to our blue layer and it's important to make sure your blue is on top. So right away you can see that we're kind of getting some chromatic aberrations here and this is looking good but it's not exactly projecting out in a natural way. So in order to do that I'm going to change the type to zoom and now you can see there's a little bit more fringing on the edge of the frame compared to the middle of the frame which is a lot more like what vintage lenses look like. So the next thing that we're going to do is stylize our footage. So to do that, I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we're going to add in a brightness and contrast effect. And before we get going, let's go ahead and call this adjustment layer color. So what I'm going to do instead of adjusting the sliders here, I'm going to hold down option and click the stopwatch. This will pop up our expression editor down here. And I'm going to just type in wiggle, open parentheses, five comma one, close parentheses, semicolon. So what this expression does is it basically is going to wiggle or randomize the values of the brightness five times a second across one total value point. So essentially it's going to take the brightness from negative one to positive one to zero randomly five times a second. And this will basically just create a little bit more of a natural film-like flicker. So it may be kind of hard to tell, but when we preview our footage here, you'll be able to see that it flickers pretty good. 
So the next thing that we want to do is add in a curves effect. And I like using curves a little bit better than levels, but it all depends on your preference. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to grab the, the black point here and we're going to kind of bring it up to maybe right about here. So basically we just want our dark areas to be a little bit more of a dark gray rather than a black. And I'm gonna bring down the whites in a similar fashion. And all we're really going for is just a little bit of a, a light gray rather than a complete white image. And this is just a little bit more in line with what vintage footage looks like. So the next thing we're gonna do is add in a vibrance effect and I'm going to turn the value of the vibrance effect down to negative 10. And that's just going to cut out on a little bit of the, the bright colors here. And the last thing we want to do here is add in a fast blur effect. And I'm just going to turn it up to about 2. So if we zoom in here, there's not a huge difference, but what it did is it kind of got rid of all the super sharp points in our image. And when you're trying to create a vintage effect, uh, it's assumed that perhaps the, the film has degraded over time and it's just not as sharp as it was originally. Next, what we're gonna do is add in a grain effect. Before we go any further, I just wanna let you know that whenever you add in the add grain effect, it can significantly slow down your computer. So depending on how much RAM you have and how fast your computer is, you may want to add in the add grain effect later or even look for a grain emulator online that you can just overlay onto your footage. So what I'm gonna do is change preview to final output so we can see what the final image is gonna look like. And I'm gonna change the preset to the Kodak 500T. There we go. And if we zoom in here, we can see that there's a lot of colored noise here. And this is just emulating a real film stock. Okay, this is looking great. The next thing we want to do is go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, and we can call this New Adjustment Layer Vignette. And we're going to drag the vignette below the color, and I'm going to add in a fast blur effect to the vignette, and we'll turn up the value to about 60, and make sure we have Repeat Edge Pixel selected. Now don't freak out, this is exactly what we want right now. What we're gonna do is go in and mask out this adjustment layer to where it's only affecting the edges in just a minute. So the next thing we wanna do is add in a brightness and contrast effect to our adjustment layer here. And the brightness, we're just gonna do maybe some value like negative 66 and click away. And you can see that this kinda added in just an overall darkness uh, to our image. So one thing I want to point out before we go any further is that our black point is actually mapped to dark gray. So whenever you're working with vignettes, make sure you put them under your color adjustment layer. This will make it more natural and it'll allow for your film grain to go over the vignette, which will just simulate a vintage lens a little bit better than if you had the vignette above your color adjustment layer. So the last thing we're going to do is go in and we're just going to create kind of an elliptical shape where we kind of just add in the edges here. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, in a lot of ways, if you're working with a vintage style color grade, you don't want it to be perfect. And I'm going to go in and set the mask to subtract. And then we can hit the F key and feather it out to 400. All right, so this is looking great. As you can see, there's a slight vignette in the image and it's not enough to where your audience is really gonna have their eyes drawn to it, but it is enough to give off a really good vintage look. One thing you might wanna adjust as you export your video is turn down the intensity of your grain. So if you don't like having this much grain in your image, you can simply turn that slider down and figure out how much grain is right for you. For me, I find that the default grain packs are not bad, but I typically do want to adjust them just a little bit before I get done exporting. So the next thing I want to do is show you how to use our free vintage presets to create the exact same look we created here in just a matter of seconds. So before we get going, just in case you're not familiar with installing presets in After Effects, it's super easy. Just go to your finder 
and you'll just copy the Vintage After Effects presets folder that's included in the download of this tutorial, which can be found at premiumbeat.com slash blog. And what you're gonna do is just copy it and go to the presets folder under After Effects, uh, whatever version you're using. I'm using CC 2015, but the presets work all the way down to After Effects CC. And you just go to the presets folder and you can paste, but I already have them in here, so I got this error box and I'll just hit stop, but uh, they'll pop up in your presets folder here. And when you get back to After Effects, make sure you click on this little hamburger icon, go to refresh list. And if you go to animation presets, you'll see that you have the vintage After Effects presets here at the bottom and they're all loaded up and ready to go. So to show you how fast these presets can be used to create a convincing vintage effect, I'm gonna work a little more quickly now. So I'm gonna drag in this big stock footage of a field into our new composition here. And I'm gonna duplicate this three times. And I'm gonna add in a shift red effect to the middle one, shift blue to the top one, and shift green to the bottom. We're gonna select them all, set our transfer mode to add. And then I'm gonna add in a radial blur effect to the top one and we'll change the type to zoom. And we just added in a little chromatic apparition. In fact, with this one, because it's gonna be black and white, we can turn it up to 15. And now I'm gonna to go to layer, new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna go find our vintage presets here. And I'm gonna add in vintage black and white to our adjustment layer, which we can rename color. And I'm gonna to go to layer, new adjustment layer again. and. We're gonna rename this adjustment layer vignette, and I'm gonna drag it below the color layer. And I'm gonna add in the Petzval lens effect, and there's also a vignette blur, which simulates the vignette that we created for the original tutorial. Uh, I'm gonna add in the Petzval lens effect to the vignette, and obviously we can't use this, it's way too stylized, but we are gonna go in and create a mask just like we did before. And I'm gonna set the mask to subtract and feather out the edges to 400. And voila, you have a vintage effect. All right, that's about it. Again, I can't encourage you enough to go download the free After Effects presets from premiumbeat.com. For the shift, blue, green, and red channel alone, they're a great tool for colorist and motion designers. For more information about this tutorial or on creating a vintage effect, check out the corresponding blog post on premiumbeat.com. You can also download the footage and free presets by following the link in the description below. And of course, if you're ever looking for the best royalty-free music, check out premiumbeat.com. Premium Beat has thousands of tracks curated with video editors in mind. This has been Caleb Ward with premiumbeat.com. Thank you.